What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Now, don't worry, I'm not gonna leave this thing here for the entire video, so you haven't gotta worry about that. You will, in fact, be able to see my face. Um, but I just thought it'd be a good opportunity to just show you what I've actually got. I've actually got a steering lock for the uh, E60 now. And it's just uh, an X-Lock, and I'm pretty sure it's by a company called Streetwise. Um, now this is essentially the same as the more expensive uh, disc lock version, um, although I don't think this is like Thatchum um, approved or whatever, so I don't know if it'll like make your insurance cheaper or whatever, but at the end of the day I just wanted a steering lock um, as some little bit of extra security. And uh, this thing here, believe it or not, was only £28. Now, a disc lock of the same size, this is a small size, um, you would be paying like in excess of £100. So to get a steering lock, you know, for £28, um, comes with two keys and um, work exactly the same. Um, obviously, I don't know how easy it's going to be to break off. Time will tell. Hopefully, I'll never, ever have to experience how easy it is to uh, break off and hopefully it does its job. Um, but it's just a little thing that I wanted to have um, as some extra security. Um, so that's my new steering lock anyway. Um, I probably should do a review on this sometime. Um, but obviously I've only just got it and um, I've only actually just put it on. So I'll probably leave it for the time being. But let's get on with the video anyway. Now then guys, as many of you know, um, I've not long bought a BMW E60 520D M Sport. And... Um, before spending like a whole load of money on it, before like, you know, putting a whole load of cosmetic mods on it, um, I do want to tackle the um, mechanical jobs, um, some of which will be quite costly to do, you know, naming the uh, timing chain job, which I will be doing myself. I uh, won't be taking it to a garage or whatever. Um, but the first thing I'm going to be doing is actually doing like the jobs that aren't going to cost anything at all. Namely like removing things on the car that are not needed. So if you saw my previous video, you know that I removed uh, the tow bar off the back, which um, saved, you know, a little bit of weight. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things that I was never really going to use. Like if I wanted to use a tow bar, I'd need to do like another um, test to get another license so I could like tow anything over 750 kg. Um, so a tow bar is really something that I'm not going to be using. Um, now there is a couple of little things interior wise that I do want to be removing and that's what I'm going to be doing today. Um, so naming the things that I want to be removing is in the glove box. Uh, now this is a very model specific, you know, it's very dependent on the spec of your car. But in the glove box, I have a six CD changer. Now, we live in, you know, 2019. Who even buys CDs anymore? Who even, like, carries, like, a whole bunch of CDs around in the car? I know I definitely don't. And uh, this uh, iDrive, this car actually has a hard drive built into it. So you can just, like, put songs on a USB stick and then put them onto the hard drive. If I do want to do that... Generally speaking though, I just use the radio like it's got DAB radio So, you know, it's everything I really need um, but one thing I definitely am, and I'm not going to use is the um, the CD changer So I'm going to be removing that today. It's pointless having things on the car that you're not going to be using um, You know granted it's not going to be you know saving much weight removing it But I can actually like sell that because someone out there is gonna want that so I can sell it and I'm pretty sure I've been looking on eBay they do sell for like 30 40 quid so um, as far as I know it does work fine you know there's no problems with it um, I will test it obviously before I move it um, but yeah you know it's something that I can sell and it's something that I can get some money back and you know reinvest it into the car in the future um, so first thing I'm, I'm gonna be doing is removing that and then there's also a little thing that I want to be removing as well. So if you have a manual E60, which is not very common, I'm pretty sure like 90% of E60s are automatics. But if you do have a manual, you'll probably be aware that your gator, so this uh, leather part that goes around the gear stick, tends to tear in one or two places. And it tends to be on the left side right there you can see that's tearing through there on the leather and then you'll see it starts to rub also on that part as well 
Now I've made a video on this in the past, but basically the reason that it does this is because it has, I'm pretty sure it's like a Jubilee clip and there's a bolt that um, goes on the Jubilee clip and that like kind of pushes through that, especially when you go to like put it into reverse because not, you've got to do that, but then you've got to push it over even more. So you're basically forcing that bolt up tight against that leather and obviously over time it does wear it. Um, so essentially I also want to be removing this bolt and probably the whole uh, Jubilee clip today because I'm pretty sure it's not even needed but you'll have you know you'll be able to see it once I remove this gator and uh, you'll be able to see what the situation looks like. So um, I think first things first we'll actually be doing this because it's a, it's a slightly easy job than the uh, CD changer which involves a little bit more work. So let's get on with this first, but obviously first we need to um, remove this uh, gator. Okay then, so I'm pretty sure I don't need to remove the gear knob. If I do, it's not gonna be a massive problem. Um, but to remove the gear gator, it's literally just held in by like a load of clips. And you can't really very easily break the clip. So essentially all you have to do is just kind of pull around the edge, pull at the leather, he says it's supposed to be easy and here I am struggling you just need to go oh there we go so it is fairly easy right so I'll pull the gator up and uh, as you can see there is this kind of uh, is it like a yeah it's kind of like a Jubilee clip and um, yeah so it's got that bolt going all the way through and yeah that's basically you know this uh, edge here is uh, kind of pushing against the leather now I'm not actually sure what this you know what is the point of this now I know there's this kind of um, this ring thing here and, and I don't know if it's like a weight or you know something that helps keep the um, the balance of the gear stick or what but you know it's very very um, unlikely that this is going to be moving up and down anyway um, so I'm going to go ahead, remove this bolt, and um, then see how we're looking. I, I don't, I don't really see why it's on there. It's not really, you know, I can't really see this thing moving. But like I said, I'm going to be removing this anyway, and, uh, and then we'll see how things look. Okay, then. So if you're wondering, the uh, the bolt is a 10 millimeter bolt. I'm not sure what size the nut is because that actually looks bigger, but. Let's try and undo it from the bolt. Pretty sure that's loose now. I mean, couldn't we just like move it round even? I've never actually thought of that. If we just, see how I've moved it round now? Because that doesn't need to be like that, does it? Let me try and move this round so it's facing there and see if that would actually catch on anything. So I'm just going to pop this back in for a sec, he says. Yeah. So it'd only be, it'd only really catch if it was in like fourth, fourth, and that could potentially catch, and sixth as well. That could potentially catch, yeah. So I think I'm just going to straight up remove it anyway. There's no real need for it to be in there. Right. There we go, then that's the whole clip out. And let's try and have a look what the purpose of that clip is. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it's literally just to hold this. This, like, thing here. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like a balancer or a weight of some sort, but... Let's be honest, that's really not going to move around that much, is it? Maybe if I go over a bump? I don't know. No, I think I'm just going to re remove it, especially for now. If I do have a problem where, you know, that I find this starts bouncing around, which I really don't think is going to become a problem, then... Uh, I might go ahead and like reinstall this, but for now, like I'm just gonna leave that as it is. Just fit this back in. Yeah, so you see, you know, especially going into reverse now, it's got nothing that they can rub against. So 
for the meantime at least that hole isn't going to get any worse i probably will be replacing this gator at some point um but obviously when i do i'm not going to have the issue where it's going to start tearing again these are pretty durable as well especially like a genuine bmw one obviously this is um the original one that was came on the car and so it, this is like 11 years old and it's still in really good condition you know bar that um that tear there so i don't know why it's pretty poor design having that um bolt uh, that long going uh going through that clip but yeah i shouldn't really have a problem with it now so that's that job done now then so the next job is to try and tackle this uh six cd changer so we're going to start off by emptying the glove box and there's actually this plastic surround now i don't know if it's just dependent on whether you have the 6cd changer or not but you may have uh, a cover here i remember on my old e6 i did have a cover on this but that's because it didn't have a 6cd changer um, but this cover this plastic cover should just uh pull out once you turn these tabs he says try to do it without breaking it and uh, then we can see we have a lot better access now, but it's just seeing how this thing comes out. So I don't know how well you can see that, but there's like two little tabs, one there, one there. Pull that down and it, it, uh, it exposes two little uh, screws and look like Allen key screws. Is that the right size? Okay then, so I think it's coming out now. I just don't think I uh, undoing that screw enough. So you just have to, they are quite long screws, I think, so you have to undo them. They don't come all the way out though, bear in mind. You just have to keep undoing them and then after a while, just uh, kind of pull on it. It should pull out, but I'm guessing it's gonna be a, uh, a quite a big unit. I'm guessing there's gonna be some, uh, connector on here doesn't seem like I have much harness to play with oh hope it didn't just break something okay so here's what the uh, here's what the back of it looks like it doesn't look like I broke anything there's just a uh, little connection on there I think it's just like a tab that you push down on on there. Yeah, that's the end of it. Oh, why has it got like a infrared light on it? Strange. Just wrap that in tape just so uh doesn't get any uh water in it or doesn't shorten anything. But I'm just gonna test just to make sure that it uh doesn't throw up any errors. But let's see what happens when we go into the CD. SOS call system failure. SOS call system failure. That is really, really strange. I don't know why it'd come up SOS call system failure just from removing the CD changer. I mean, the SOS call systems. SOS burns up there. Is that even supposed to pop down? That's strange. Okay then, so we've learned something new today. For whatever reason, this uh, box, this uh, 6 CD changer, it must talk to like the Bluetooth module or whatever. Um, but when I removed it, uh it came back up to the came up to the bluetooth screen and like it wasn't con connecting to any of my bluetooth devices so my phone or whatever um, and then it came up with the sos um was it emergency call error or whatever it was but obviously since i've put it back in just went on to the control messages and it says no fault so 
for whatever reason like removing it seems to cause that problem so i'm guessing they talk you know between the modules and if it's because it's not plugged in or because it requires something that's inside that box or whatever but long story short i'm gonna have to um put it back in because it's gonna cause an error maybe in the future i might be able to get it coded out or you know i'm gonna be able to do something so it's not gonna be causing me errors uh, but yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to put it back in so that was kind of a wasted uh, Exercise, but at least now I know in the future that uh, The different modules that they talk to each other and it's probably not a good idea to you know Go removing one, but um, yeah a long lesson learned. So let's stick with that back in and uh, let's get on with our day there we go. CD change it back in its place It's all lined up Okay then, so um, job done today, like I said, was a pretty um, pointless exercise, but at least we all learned something, right? Um, don't go and uh, try and remove um, some modules from your car, some, you know, maybe a CD changer uh, like it was in my um, situation, at least without doing some research. Like I said, you may be able to remove that, you know, if as long as you code it out or whatever. But I don't know if it, you know, if it if it does interfere with like your Bluetooth module and all that because I just found it strange how as soon as I unplugged it, turned on the iDrive, it came up with like um, uh, the Bluetooth screen and like it wouldn't ever, you you know, it's taken way too long. It just wouldn't connect to uh, the Bluetooth and um, and then obviously it came up with that SOS um, emergency call error whatever it was i can't even remember what it was now um but yeah so that's all back in anyway um we have uh, obviously we have done the um we've removed the um clamp from this uh gear stick and at least we're not going to be getting any more wear on the gear gator at least for the time being anyway until we uh until we replace that so yeah i guess that's kind of been a successful thing that we've done today okay then so i know i was gonna like talk about the um steering lock in like a whole um separate video but i feel like i should really make this one worthwhile so i'm just going to go over it real quick then how you know how to fit it on and everything now on my steering wheel i've actually got one of these wheel covers now this is actually a genuine um disc lock one it was only like a fiver or something like that um but it just protects your steering wheel obviously when the um wheel lock goes over it it's um i don't know is it aluminium i don't know but it's uh obviously quite rough and i don't really want it to be um tearing the uh leather so i've got this um wheel cover on and uh and then the steering lock goes on just on top of that okay then so let's install this thing now uh right so it should go on like this that just uh slides in there he says they got caught on something i think it's just the there you go i think it's just the wheel cover and then that button just pushes on. Okay then, so the X-Lock uh, wheel lock is now secured. It's in position. It is a little bit loose. Um, my steering wheel, I'm pretty sure it's like 38 centimeters. This wheel lock's something like 39. Now there is like some little sticky pads that did come with it. I think like basically to act as a spacer. So I might try and stick them on just to try and buff this out a bit so it's a little bit tighter on. Obviously it's not going to fall off, it's still doing its job, but it's just, uh, you know, it does have a little bit of play in it. So I'll probably fit them at a later stage. But yeah, as you can see, it's very easy to fit. Um, let me just show you, let me just show you uh, how to unlock it. So you have one of these keys, well you have, actually have two keys, you get two keys with the, um, with the wheel lock. Put the key in. Just turn it, and then obviously that just pulls out then. And to lock it, there you go. Now you're locked in, simple as that. Okay then, so you might be thinking, you know, 
why have you even bothered to put like a steering lock on a um, like 11 year old car well you know the car is obviously still pretty desirable you know it's very expensive when it was new and um you know and it, at the end of the day like there's opportunity uh thieves you know these you know these thieves that just walk around and say oh that's quite a nice car how easy is is it to steal um and when they see something like uh, a steering lock on it and they see that it's got an alarm and everything then they're, they're obviously going to think twice aren't they but if they see a car that's very easy to steal it hasn't got any like security on it whatsoever then um they might just go along and uh, and take it so um, for me, it's worth having it on, you know, at least for for the price that it costs. And it should obviously put some thieves off because, you know, at the end of the day, if they want to take your car, they'll take your car. But they are going to have to put in some serious effort, you know, to try and get this thing off um, to actually be able to drive it away. But yeah, you know, if you um, like your car, if you don't want it to be stolen, then I really think that you should um, at least uh, invest in some kind of extra security. Um, especially in the UK with uh, car theft being so high at the moment and um, yeah I can't imagine it being a very nice feeling to have like your pride and joy just taken away from you so yeah I think you really should uh, get some extra form of security to be honest okay then so I think I'm gonna wrap up this video like I said it's kind of been a bit of an epic fail I did plan to uh, remove the CD changer and put it on eBay to get some extra pounds back uh but yeah at least we've done the um that silly bolt that's like ripping the gear gator and you know i've kind of showed you the um steering lock so you know have i redeemed myself please let me know i just want to thank you guys for watching please give this video a like leave a comment down below subscribe if you haven't already done so because there'll be a hell of a lot of videos on this car still to come and i'll see you guys in that next video peace <laughs>